you all are welcome. Okay, so on the call, we have Florence Warikam. She's going to be our speaker for the night. So I'm just going to give you a brief bio on Florence. So um, Florence Warikam is a fund portfolio manager at FSDH Assets Management Limited. With over 10 years progressive experience, she is a chartered accountant, ECA, and has an MBA from the University of Lagos. Florence is passionate about investment and educating the public on investment decisions to grow their financial portfolios. In her spare time, Florence loves a good movie and volunteers in the theater department and finance professional community group of a local church. So Florence is going to be taking us on a topic which is um, building a healthy investment portfolio. So um, we're going to go right into it now. And if you have any questions, please use your please use the comments section, um, the comments box in your Zoom, and get your like writing materials to jot things down. So it's going to be a very educative one. So hi, Florence. Are you there? Hey, Florence. Hello. Hi. Please, we'd like to see you. Thank you. Thank you. My video is actually on. Yes, yes, I can see you. So if you don't mind, please take us on the right. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for coming and joining this call. Uh, my name is Florence Warikam, like she has already introduced. And then um, as we all know, um, I'll be speaking basically on um, building a healthy investment portfolio. So it's my pleasure to be here. I'm, I want to say thank you to the organizers for um, having me and allowing me to join this platform. So it's I'll try to make it um, as interactive as possible. Please drop your questions. Um, and then, you know, the later 15 minutes, we're going to actually address any questions that you may have. So um, I don't know um, basically the people that I'm speaking with. So I'm just going to assume um, zero knowledge and then work it up from there, basically. So I'll first of all even start with what an investment portfolio is. So what is an investment portfolio? So an investment portfolio is basically um, like, um, a, a, like a pile of assets that either an individual or an entity um, has. So that's what an investment portfolio is. And usually um, these assets are being, um, you know, invested in the financial, it's actually, it's usually financial assets, you know, um, basically assets that you can, you can turn into, um, to, into cash, into money, basically. So that's what, in, in simple form, that's what an investment um, portfolio is. So we'll be talking about how we can, you know, as individuals, as um, entities, basically, we can actually build a good, a healthy investment portfolio. So first of all, I want to start with what you should consider when you want to build an investment portfolio. If you want to build an investment, the first thing, one of the things that you should consider is your investment objective, right? Whenever you want to start set on a journey or start any venture, you should have a goal or have a plan of what it is that you want to achieve so that it's not just, you're not just doing it just because, oh, okay, everybody's doing it or it sounds cool or it sounds nice. You know, you should have an objective. Okay, what do you want to achieve? You know, where do you want to be or what, what, what kind of returns are you looking at? And then also another thing that you want to look at when you want to build an investment portfolio is to consider your personality type in terms of your risk tolerance. You should consider whether you're somebody that is, um, is um, risk adverse, that is you don't like risk, or if you are actually, you don't mind taking some risk. So you have to know what your personality type is in terms of risk. 
taken because that would guide the kind of investments or the kind of the kind of investments that you're going to be making. And then another thing that you need to to watch out for is when you're making building an investment portfolio is that you need to find out your um your time horizon basically the time period in which you want to build that investment portfolio. So age is a very, very important factor when considering um, when building an investment. If say you are maybe in your eight, when in your teens or in your twenties, um, in your thirties, you want to build an investment portfolio. Generally, you know, it is believed that, you know, you're going to live for a certain number of years. You still have a certain number of years. So you know the time horizon which you want to build this your wealth, you want to accumulate your wealth. So, but then you know the kind of portfolio that you would build for somebody in in his or her twenties, for example, is going to be very different from the kind of portfolio you would build for somebody that is in his uh, maybe fifties, looking to retire soon, or maybe just late forties. So that's why time horizon is very very important as well so um you also other things that you want to consider when building an investment um portfolio is that you want to clarify your your lifestyle your spending habits you want to clear you want to you want to know what your situation is in terms of um like how soon or how like how often you're going to need cash when your cash flow basically so if you are say in your 30s you have um, school fees coming up. You, you're going to be, you, you know, you have children's school fees, or even if it's your own school fees, if, you, if there's a cash outflow, you know, that is being required, you know, um, from you, which you have to make, that is also a, a very, very important, um, that is also a very, very important factor that you need to consider when building an investment portfolio. So, um, so moving on, to um, basically the kind of investments that you can make. So traditionally, the traditional investments that we have usually are um, equities and then fixed income instruments and then land, right? Those are the traditional, but um, investment has moved on from that, from the traditional investments to what we call in, uh, alternative investments. And that's where um, other types of investments like, um, um, you know, um, ag agriculture, commodities, you know, you might want to invest in commodities. Um, you may want to invest in um, crypto is another alternative investment that is coming up. You may want to invest in Forex and, and all of that. And, um, so there, there are actually a lot and lots of um, alternative investments that are coming up. But traditionally, it's stocks, bonds, and then land. Those are the traditional investments um, that we have. So if you are going to build an investment portfolio, traditionally, your, I mean, your, your, your assets should, if you want to have a well-rounded um, portfolio, it should include some of these things. You know, you can pick an alternative investment, you can pick traditional investments like stocks and bonds, and then also you can also go into real estate. So, um, so picking it, I want to, next thing I want to talk about is basically, um, you know, remember we talked about your, the, the factors that you should consider when building an investment um, portfolio, right? So this is how it comes to play. So um, we have the, a, a portfolio can be conservative um, or it can be mildly aggressive and then it can also be full-fledged aggressive. So the reason why you consider those factors of age, uh, that's um, time horizon, risk tolerance, objective and, and all that is because if you are, for instance, somebody in, your, in, the, in the late 40s, 50s, you know, looking to retire, the investment um, that you'll be looking, you'll be looking to more building a conservative portfolio. If you are somebody that is risk adverse, you know, you will be looking to building a conservative portfolio. But if you are somebody that, because of the time horizon, if you're young, um, let's say you're just starting out, there, there is room for you to take more risk. Because even if 
um, you are able to take risk. Um, even if you take risk and then the market turns um, in the opposite direction, because you have a longer time horizon, there is, you have more time to actually recover, you know, from that, from that whatever downturn your investments may have taken. So if you ask me, when is the right time to build an investment portfolio? It's now, whatever age class you, you whatever age class you may find yourself, whatever demography you, you find yourself, it's, it's actually, there's no time that is too early, you know, to start building your investment portfolio and there's no time that is too late. So I spoke about um, the different asset classes. We have um, equities, that's stocks and, and bonds. So if you want to um, pick stocks, for instance, you want to look at, the, you, there's also the process of, oh, okay, I'm supposed to have stocks in my portfolio. It's not, it's not that you say, oh, I'm supposed to have stocks in my portfolio. You just go ahead and just start buying stocks. No, um, you also, there's also an art in stock picking. You have to pick the kind of stocks that you want. Generally, if you're picking stocks, you want to pick stocks that um, you, you that are that are actually defensive. What I mean by defensive is that they, regardless of the situation in the economy, there is more. There is a tendency that it will still the the companies, the owners of um, those equities, would actually still be in business. So you want to look at um, like um, like um, the agri sector, you know. Um, you want to look at the agri sector. Those are good um, places to look at in terms of defensive stocks. You want to also look at um, um, like the pharmaceutical sector. Those are the defensive stocks. But that doesn't mean that you cannot also pick other sectors. Um, you also want to consider when mixed um, picking stocks. You also want to consider. Um, for instance, the management of the company, the fundamentals of the of the company. That is, if they have good management, if the management has good experience, you want to you want to you want to decide. You want to find out if um, how, how 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 what is the market share that that particular stock has in the market. You know, so those are the factors that you are looking at to see whether. Um, this company is going to likely continue to be in the in business for the foreseeable foreseeable future future, and um, and and also that is not going to collapse. So integrity of the management, the experience of the management, the position that they hold in their industry, whether they are you know they are the major the industry players in that in that um, in that in that space in their industry, those are good signs. When you want to pick a, a, a stock, a stock within in um, for your portfolio, then you also want to make sure that um, and other considerations are if, um, for instance, those stocks are actually paying dividends, because if you if you 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 want to consider whether those dividend pays a particular company has been paying dividend consistently for like let's say the past five years, if they've been paying dividend consistently, that's a Good one too, because that means that you're going to be having income. So there are two ways in which you can actually grow your asset portfolio. You can your asset portfolio can grow either um, through um, income generation. That means you're getting a certain amount of money at, at, a, part, at a particular period of time, or it can grow through capital appreciation. That means that let's say by the time you uh, made an investment, it was two naira. By the by, next year, next two or three years, it now becomes five naira. So, um, the, the, um, looking at uh, picking a stock based on the income generation that it poses to bring to your portfolio is another good consideration that you might want to look at. So, moving on from stock picking, I will also talk about bond picking because we talked about. Um, um, bonds being part of the asset that you may want to pick. So bonds, there are diff several types of bonds. We have um, federal government bonds. We have um, corporate bonds. We also even have euro bonds. But I'll just speak, speak to the, Fed, the corporate bonds and the FGN bonds. So when you're picking bonds, you want to consider things like their coupon. So the coupon is the interest rate that the um, issuer pays the you 
the investor, you know, usually for bonds, it is paid every six months. So when picking out a bond, you want to look at the maturity period, you know, if it is a 20 year bond and remember your portfolio, you're looking at if your time horizon is, um, you know, it's the time horizon, giving your time horizon, your risk consideration into, into perspective, you may not want to go that long. You may want to go at, at a more average tenor bond. And then also like the bond rate is important. Then there's also something called yield, which is even more important than coupon. So yield is more important than coupon because, um, you know, after a bond is being issued for the first time in the mark in the in the in the, in the in the for the first time in the capital market, it is usually issued what they call at par. That means that the you would buy it at the the like the base value, right? Then. After it is it has been issued for the first after the first issue, it is then subsequently traded in the sec, what we call the secondary market, and that secondary market, they it has um, is basically investors like you and I that may not have participated at the primary issue, that is the initial issue, and we now want to either buy or sell um, stop, um, the bonds just the same way you buy and sell equities now you're actually doing that in the secondary market because it's investor to investor no longer that directly to the um to the to the issuer or the owner of the company except in exceptional um cases so when you are buying at after after the the, the company has issued or the issuer has issued his bond at par um there is actually you know there's a possibility for the price of the bond to actually go high or go low. Remember I talked about investments being one of the ways in which you can increase your portfolio is by um, your capital appreciation. So it's possible for, let's say an investor buying a bond at issue at 100 Naira, that is at par. And then in next week or next month is now selling at maybe 105 or 101. So you as a secondary market investor, why yield is very important is that the yield takes into consideration the price of the bond. So if you are going to buy um, a bond now in the secondary market, you don't just be carried away by whatever coupon that you're being paid. Also pay attention to the price of which you are buying one unit of the bond. If you are buying it at higher than par, at a premium, so you, that means that the coupon, the, the coupon, the value of that coupon that you're getting, it actually, the, the real return is actually a little bit less than the um, return of the coupon. And then also, um, if you're, it's also possible for after the initial issue, a bond to actually be selling at maybe 99 Naira or 98 Naira. So in that kind of situation, when you buy, the yield would actually be higher than whatever the coupon rate was at the particular, or rather is at the, at the time of um, issue. So basically those are, I, you know, because this is just the first time at class, I may not be able to go into all of that. There will be an investment professional, of course, that you can speak to, to give you more details, but I'm just here to give us a general knowledge and give us an idea so that when even an, a professional is speaking to you, you can ask the right questions so that you are making good um, investment choices. So um, those are the factors that you consider when picking up picking a bond. So I um, I actually did talk about. Let's go um, speaking about the the um, different types of portfolios that we may have. I mentioned that you can have a conservative portfolio. A conservative portfolio basically would have investment in fixed income instruments like between 70 to 75%, right? So what are fixed income instruments, first of all? Fixed income instruments is, is a type of investment where um, when after making an investment, there is a fixed interest rate or a fixed return that is coming to you, right? 
So like, for instance, your fixed deposit, when you invest, um, maybe, you, you, you know, when you go to, you, you ask your bankers, I want to invest in fixed deposit, they'll tell you the rates, right? So they, you, they, it's not up to debate. You actually know after the period, after a particular period, you know the interest rate that you're going to receive. So, and then the same thing applies to bonds. Bonds to are usually, or euro bonds. They, they, they are usually, when the um, issuer is actually, you know, trying to get these funds from the public, there is a particular rate, you know, of return that he promises the investors. So this is the reason why a somebody who wants to build a conservative portfolio would have, you know, majority of his assets in the fixed income space. So if you know that having having decided and and or rather determined that the kind of investor that you are that you are maybe if it's determined that you are more of more or less a conservative portfolio. When building your investment, your conservative in investor, when building your portfolio, you want to have more of your investments in fixed income instruments. So you can have like up to 70% in fixed income instruments. Right? And then um, you can also have then okay, so for con conservative portfolio, you have that. And then you can you for conservative portfolio, you can also have like a, 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 a much smaller percentage of your portfolio in say equities and other alternative investments. So um, equities, um, you know, equity market is quite different from the the bonds market because um, first of all, the the um, these companies are not promising you a particular rate of return. You're basically just trading, buying and selling because you believe that, um, you know, the price it, it is a good price. The price will either go higher, you know, basically a way of collecting assets. But the equity market is much more um, open to fluctuations, you know. Um, and so, um, you know, it is a much more risky investment to, 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 to undertake. And that is why somebody with a, with a conservative portfolio would have lesser um, allocation. Sorry, Florence, you are muted. Sorry, we lost her. Wow, how long have I been muted? You're yeah, not for seconds. long, just a few oh. seconds. Just a few okay. seconds. All right, okay, thank you. So, um, I think I was speaking about, um, yeah, I was talking about um, the the, um, the conservative portfolio and then having a lesser allocation to let's say um, equities um, to to equities and other alternative investments um, like maybe if you want to go into crypto um, or if you want to go into um, 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 forex that's forex trading or if you want to go into um, agriculture or commodities um, investment. So those are those are alternative investments, and they are more um, risky. So if you're you, if you're having a conservative portfolio, you want to limit your exposure to that that kind of space. Meanwhile, if you're having like if you if you are mildly aggressive, you can reduce your asset allocation from seventy to say like maybe 40% that asset allocation to, to fixed income instrument from 70 to say like maybe 40% and then increase your um, allocations to all the other um, um, asset classes that are more, um, more, more risky. But generally one thing you should know in investment is that the higher the risk, the higher the return. Or rather, should I maybe I should say put it this way: the higher the return, the higher the risk. I think that is better for us. Let us know that if you see an investment and um, an investment opportunity, and you're hearing that the return is a crazy sum, maybe in double digits, when um, 
you know, the general investments are that are available, you know, the traditional investments, they are in single digits. You know that there is more risk that, are, that is involved in that. So you want to watch it. So generally picking portfolios, I've talked about picking um, bonds. I've talked about picking stocks. I'd also talk about, um, you know, pick going into these alternative investment classes. I did mention Forex and crypto because crypto is becoming, you know, a funny if a, a like thing that people m- many youths are going into it in droves. So I cannot deny it. We can't deny the fact that it's gaining traction in the investment space. However, what I would say is that before making any investment, you have to ensure that you understand the investment. That is very very important as an investor. If somebody comes and says he's doing Forex and he's saying, oh, he's going to offer you, maybe then when we're hearing crazy rates like 30%, we're hearing all those outrageous sums. You have to make sure that you um, you understand how exactly he's going to convert your 100 Naira to 130 Naira. If you do not understand it, please don't, Avoid it. Avoid it generally. Avoid something that you don't understand because there are so many people out there giving investment, you know, advice and saying all of this. And because yes, the economy situation is quite challenging. Everybody is trying to look for ways to beat inflation and to get optimal return. But please ensure that you understand whatever investment you want to go into. Also ensure that you have you do proper research on whatever investment that you want to go into. Investment, the research is available to us. Internet is available to us. I talked about picking stocks and saying and saying things like, okay, you want to check the market share that the stock has in the. This information is actually available. You want to find out the kind of management they have. You want to find out whether they made profit. It's available. If you check, if you check the internet, you'll be able to see that w- whether um, you know, um, you know, certain companies have been make, giving dividends, have been paying dividends, and so on and so forth. So it's very important to um, to actually do research. The third thing I want to say when um, making an investment is to is be good if you um, actually get an investment professional to help. So that's where um like mutual funds come in and that's why they're advantageous because for mutual funds um these funds are being managed by professionals that are constantly in the market you know they are constantly watching the market to see the movements in the market to you know take advantage of investment opportunities and so on and so forth so you know you can depending you can get an investment professional you can seek the services of a professional to when making an investment, um, making, making, when choosing your stock or building your portfolio, um, or you can um, pick a mutual fund. Just make sure that um, the mutual fund you're going to pick, make sure that it's a fund that is performing well. Um, you can find out how it, whether it's performing well still by the internet, like I said, and then you can also find out um, things like um the okay so do you want to find out the return that is it's the other particular mutual fund is doing um vis-a-vis other mutual funds in the market and then you also want to find out whether it is sec registered so just don't be be careful not to just oh okay somebody says he works in a financial institution you you are just going in to jump into it so you have to make sure that the the, the that financial institution is well regulated because the regulations actually help to curb and protect investors. So those are the things that you want to look at when um, you know building your portfolio. So um, I think um, the, the, after uh, over time, um, it's possible for your investment portfolio to act to actually to grow, and then af- even after you have um allocated assets in a particular way it can it, 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 you know depending on the assets a particular asset can shrink 
particular asset can grow and then it's, it spoils your asset allocation. So that's where you need to like reass to, to, to reassess your asset allocation. And that's where portfolio rebalancing comes in, you know. So if let's say you had um, 50% or 50% in bonds and you had um, 50, um, maybe 30% in equities, it's possible for equities to grow so much that, you know, it's now taking 50% of your, port your portfolio. And if you want to maintain, if you, if you want to maintain your portfolio asset allocation, you may have to exit that position um, in the equity space and then invest more. So that's where rebalancing of your portfolio comes in. That's, that's also so, something that you do. Then um, in terms of the risk, risk uh, in the, uh, of your portfolio, um, you have to make sure to watch out that you do not, you're not overly exposed to a particular to a particular issuer or a particular sector. Don't go putting all your money in one basket, right? So don't go putting all your money in one basket. We've been taught that since for as long as we can remember, you know, about the issue about don't put all your eggs in one basket, don't put all your money in one basket. You have to make sure that you're not overly exposed to a particular asset class because um, asset, asset class, like especially the secondary market, there may be fluctuations up and down, and you don't want to lose all your assets just because a particular sector is not performing well. So um, the, the counterparties that you also use, you may want to also watch, watch the counterparty. You may want to have just the same way you have several different banks, so that if one bank um, disappoints you, you can always use another bank. That the same thing applies here, right? If you want to pick a part, if you want to go for the banking, make sure, if you are going to go into equities now, make sure that you are not overly exposed to only one sector. The banking sector is a very good sector, but it's, it's also good to not be overly exposed because at a particular time, the banking sector may not be doing so well. And that means that your assets are depleting. So you want to diversify your portfolio. And when I say diversify your portfolio, diversification is not just picking different assets and say, oh, I've diversified my portfolio. No, when you are looking at diversification, you are actually measuring risk and reward. Remember I said that generally investments, the higher the reward, the higher the risk. So you, you want to make sure that the risk in a particular place balances out or the reward in another place. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or rather, the, the reward balances out a risk somewhere. So that's what you, you want to look at. <clears throat> if you're going to pick another, um, you make sure that you, you pick, um, um, maybe if we're saying going for stocks now, for example, you don't pick stocks that always move in the same direction. That means that, okay, um, one industry that, um, if if it is going down, it will have a ripple effect on the other um, um, stock. You want to pick one that when one is going down, another one will be going up. So generally, in stocks and the stocks market and the fixed income market have an inverse relationship. You see that whenever the stock market is doing great, that is usually when the fixed income market is not doing so great. So for instance, right now that we're having treasury bills, the, the 364 days treasury bills at 4%, we can see that the NSC um, NGX ASI index is returning about 9%. It, it, sometime in February, it actually went to double digits. So that's what usually happens when one sector is performing low. So that's why it's good to have. So imagine if all you wanted to be doing is just doing fixed income instruments. That means that you're going to be getting low returns. So that's the, that's the reason why you should also diversify your portfolio. I think I'll take a stop now. I don't know. I'll take a pause now to take questions if there are any. Um, I don't know if there are any questions, what I've said so far. 
Okay, thank you very much, Florence. Welcome. Okay, does anybody have a question? So we have a question to ask. Yeah, I do. Before have I ask question. mine, or do I just go first? Hello. What did you say? Oh, please unmute yourself. I said that I do have a question. You have a question. Yes, please unmute yourself and ask a question. Thank you. All right, can you hear me? We can yes, hear I you. can hear you. All right, great, thank you. Um, Florence, thank you for the time you took to take us through the learning points, I'm grateful. So you were talking about something about being mildly aggressive and non-aggressive, and then I, I was thinking to myself, so what we being aggressive uh, with respect to investment mean which of the instruments will I should will I be putting out the more and which one should I be retracting? Okay, thank you very much for that question. So um so I talked about um like um Assets like um, um, alternative investments, like in investments in commodities, um, forex, um, equities, um, and then um, crypto. So those are the kind of assets that if you are heavily um, exposed to that, those kind of sectors, they are you are you are you are that means that you are quite aggressive you are actually very very aggressive so the reason why we term it that way is because he, being aggressive means that you 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 are willing to take risk you know you're a risk taker so you notice that the the um investments which i just spoke about they are actually they easily um fluctuates they are easily go either up or down yes when they make profit you know when they go to, um you know when they are upward on an upward trend you can make a whole lot of money but then there is also that possibility for things to actually go down a lot another thing that you find that is common about those assets is that they are subject to factors of um, demand and supply so basically it's it is when there is a demand for something, that's when the price will go up. For instance, in equities space, when there is high demand for something, if more investors are looking to buy a, part a particular equity, they would, they would um, the price of that equity keeps going higher and higher. And then when there is no demand, and that, that may, doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong with the asset, you know? So you hear on headlines, a lot of times you see something like investors lose. That is like a panic attack, just throwing panic. Investors lose so and so. It doesn't necessarily mean that all oh, the stocks, all the stocks that they bought are bad. You know, the assets in its funda, like it may still have the intrinsic value, you know, of being a very good because it has the potential to still grow higher. But just because of, um, you know, at, at that particular point in time, maybe a lot of investors want to exit that position. So they are looking to sell. So when they are looking to sell, you know, the price actually goes down. So essentially what makes you an aggressive investor is that you are willing to take more risk, right? Because of the returns that may come your way. I just spoke about equities. Um, Some people have already made as high as 20% in the equity sectors this 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 uh, this year alone and while while you are still in the we just concluded the first quarter meanwhile the fixed income space has been steady so a conservative investor would not be looking to uh, i don't want any story i don't want high blood pressure 
I don't want to hear today that the equity that I bought at maybe 25 Naira, it is now 20 Naira. I don't want that one. Please, let me invest in my treasury bills, in my uh, uh, FGN savings bond. I will wait to maturity. I will not even trade in the secondary market. I will wait, JJ, let them be giving me my, my interest. You know, when the time comes, let me just shall know. Nothing like my money is changing, going up and down. So that makes you a conservative person, you know, and a conservative investor. I hope I've been able to answer that question. Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. It makes so much sense. Thank you, Florence, for answering the question. Does anybody else have any question to ask? Please unmute yourself and ask a question if you do have a question. Anybody? One of the Godwin Harris has the hand raised. Okay, please, can you unmute yourself to ask the question? Okay, I think while we're waiting for the person, I'll just ask my own question. Okay, I think I'm uh, sorry, yeah. can you hear me? What did you say? Are you there? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I, I raised up my hand for question. Okay, um, okay. Please ask okay, um, thank you very much, um, um, Dr. Flo, for that wonderful presentation. Um, my question is um when if if you are actually trying to build a conservative um investment portfolio, you know, um I think lately I've been doing research on EO bond and I, my understanding is, you know, if you don't have up to a $200,000 EO bond, you can't, you can't trade fully. Hence, you opt for mutual fund um, EO bond. So my question is, what are those things we need to look out for? You know, there are various, um, <clears throat> various companies that offer this mutual fund EO bond. Like, is it that the interest rates varies by, by, by investment institution or... Um, what what exactly do you think um, one should actually you know um, be looking at for when when you know considering all of those uh, mutual euro bond? Thank you. Yo, thank you very much, Biodun, <laughs> um, for that wonderful question. Ah, what you asked is actually a very complicated question. Um, yes, it is true that you cannot um, you know play in the um, in the um, the euro bond space that is trade directly um, except if you have a minimum of two hundred thousand dollars and yes the uh, mutual funds that's the mutual euro bonds or the mutual dollar funds have helped with that now um, I, I said that when choosing a mutual fund you have to check the return that it is doing before you choose the mutual fund that you want to open an account with you want to start doing business with it is okay to ask for the return or the historical return just make research to find out maybe the one that has been best performing returning the best and i think you can find that on sec website sec website can actually provide you with some of that information now the reason why I'm hesitating to answer this your question is because there is also um, a type of valuation methodology which portfolio managers use to, um, to value their investment. So there, there are two types of valuation methods in portfolio management. You could value at fair value, that is marking to market. What that means is that the price of the assets in that portfolio, those euro bonds, whatsoever price they are currently returning now, right, is the price, it will affect the price of your um, portfolio, your euro bond fund. And that automatically makes it subject to fluctuations. The fluctuations that you see in the market it also translates that fluctuation even onto your euro bond fund. So it depends on the valuation method, which whatever euro bond you are picking is using. 
a, a euro bond, um, another euro bond fund may decide to use amortized, they may decide to value their bond on amortized basis. So that means that they are not re translating the effects of the fluctuations in the euro, euro bond real time market to the price of the of the of 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 the of your fund. So that means that your um, investment would be growing at a steady rate, right? So there are two sides to it. So if you're a conservative portfolio, you you may want, not want to interest yourself with anything. If you're a conservative um, investor, I beg your pardon, you may not want to con concern yourself with any kind of investment that would be um, marked mark to market. But if you are, um, you know, depending on if you are mildly aggressive, you can go into that kind of space. And the reason why I'll tell you the, the good side of it is that if you are going to you to a, a euro bond where they are valuing, the valuation is based on marked to market. That means that if when the price of the bond, euro bond is also high, it means that that fund would also be returning very high, right? So with the, 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 the sharp increase that may be going on in, 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 in um, because right now, for instance, there is talks of um, inflation and because of the inflation that in, in the US, now I'm not talking about Nigerian inflation now. So that has affected the yields on Euro bonds. So right now it's actually a good time to buy euro bonds even it, it depends on how like it's a good time because euro bonds are currently we can get some euro bonds at eight percent right now so um to, like but then like sometime last year at the towards the end of last year you know yields were not doing so good so that means that the price you know was high at that time so that may not have been a good time to enter the euro bond market if your um the mutual fund you're using is marking to market so basically i would say that it depends on the type of valuation methodology which your portfolio manager is using now um so um for for the um sec has actually put it that very soon they would mandate all um asset management companies to be marking to market so that you can see the true value of your asset at any point in time but they have not they have they have not put a timeline so there are still quite a number of funds that are not marking to mark to market they are going at amortized rates so you 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 if you want to now invest in euro bond you can ask your the relationship manager Okay, are they marking to market or are they? So this is a good question. And then the person will now know that you know what you are saying, doing or asking. Do you understand? But generally, I would say that when investing in any um, fixed income fund, right, you should know that your time horizon should be nothing less than 18 months because. Um, don't don't say you want to go into fixed income mark in fixed incomes mutual funds and you want to um come out by tomorrow no that one is for or you want to come out next month and let me just invest this money and come out um next next month that is for money market if you want to enter if you if you want to do that kind of short term investment just for a short piece of time go to a money market fund but if you want to invest in a fixed income fund just put it at the back of your mind that I'm giving myself to like, maybe I'm going to give myself to like maybe, um, one year to one and a half years. For Hello, can anyone hear? No, it's probably uh, a network. Okay, okay, okay. Back with us. Okay, thank you,
Um, you guys, please let's just wait for um trying to get back on. It's probably a network issue, so she can complete what she was saying. Hello guys, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I was just thrown out. I deeply apologize for that break in transmission. Hi. Yeah. Let's continue. Okay, so but I think I was just saying that um, if you're going to go into any fixed income mutual fund, give yourself like at least 18 months so that you can give, you know, allow whatever valuation method that the portfolio manager is using, both are good, right? You can just allow the market to do its work, but most likely in 18 months, you would have you would have a positive um, return, you know, um, you know, uh, by the end of 18 months. So don't invest in a fixed income fund where, where fixed income mutual fund, you know, when you have urgent needs for your money. That's not the place to. That's not the place to invest in. Go rather you go for the money market fund, or you go to, for a fund that is being valued on an amortized basis. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, please. I need more of those more questions. <laughs> thank you for that question. Okay, thank you so much, Florence. May I have my question? I want to ask. Okay. okay, so um, for an investor with limited knowledge, are there apps that can help to, like, I help with some that can help someone start? Um. Yeah. Okay, so I know that you know, especially in developed countries, there are like robo advisors and all of that. If you're talking about an app, yeah. Those are like the, um, that's um, the, 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 those are the kind of um, apps. But here in Nigeria, I'm not sure of any app that would because generally, if any the apps that I know, they are just basically either savings platforms or investment platforms. But they're not necessarily giving you advice on um, on what you should do. I think understandably so because some of that knowledge. You know, you have to seek for it before you get it. But then, so so I don't know. I don't know about any app really in Nigeria here. Um, I don't know about any app. You know, but you can always like if you if you um, open an account with any um, asset management company, or if you uh, if you maybe if you are buying stocks through any of all the stockbroking firms, usually there is. I'm sure they will give you an account officer. 
So that account officer, you can use that opportunity to ask your account officer some questions so that, you know, so that the person will be able to guide you appropriately. And, and that's what they're actually for. Your account officers are there to guide you. You tell them, so some of these things that we've talked about, you tell them what your risk is. You tell them your risk profile. You tell them what your objective is. And then they'll be able to give you better advice as to the kind of, among the products that they have available with them, they'll be able to tell you, okay, this is what we have that can, you know, suit your risk appetite or your investment profile. Okay, thank you very much. I have one more question though. Like, okay. Just one more question. Okay, so that we're realistic about like our expectations here, what is the average rate of return that we should be considering for investment if we're to invest? Okay, so that everything depends on the return you are expecting depends on where you are investing. I told you right now, um, treasury bills for, for, for one year, would you believe it is just about 4%. That is the reason why if you go to the bank right now to say you want to invest fixed deposits, it's not doing great because fixed income space is not doing great. So there isn't like a blanket sum. It all depends on the market situation, how ma market is returning. Whereas in that in this same market, your you can get um, um, returns of um, up to ten percent in your equities. Ten, depending on how good you are, you can get up to twenty percent in the in the equity space. So there isn't a blanket um, return. There isn't a blanket um, return that. We can, we can say to you uh, that I can give to you, except if maybe you want to say mutual funds now. Okay, so if you want to, if I want to categorize it by mutual funds, um, on an average, I, I would say that mutual funds are currently returning at about, that's for money market mutual funds now. They are currently returning between five to 9%, between five to 9%. That's what they are returning you know, um, yeah. Then there are some of all these um, agri investments that are doing double digits, but you have to be very, very careful before you go to all those agri investments. You have to re research to make sure that the company that you are doing that agri investment is, is quite reputable. They've done it before. How are they experienced? How experienced are, are they? Have they been paying back? You have to check their history too. And then generally when making investments, especially if you're going to a risky space, don't go into a risky, don't go picking a risky investment for a long tenure. The longer the tenure, the more risky it is, <laughs> the more likely that your money will not be given back to you. So if you want to go venture, like maybe dip your toes into some investments that are a little bit risky, 10 or two should be something that you should consider to make sure that you're not overly exposing yourself or, you know, you're being careful. So that's what I would say. Thank you very much, Florence. Thank you very, very much. This session was really enlightening. So is somebody raising his I'm hand. I'm just going to like give it. Oh, is oh somebody is raising. Except Please, can you unmute yourself to and uh, if you want to ask a question. Okay, um, Doctor Flu, I'm still the one anyway. Mm, excuse me, briefly, please. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So I've had you mention agriculture, and I, I also believe that um one can also invest in some fintech company. So can you just give us like some you know company maybe um what is it called that offer this um offer the services of you know come and you know because i know of course that someone just need to be careful in picking those company that offer the services um service of purchasing of agriculture investments fintech investments can you just give us some list maybe maybe like three that somebody can actually vouch for sorry i can't give you names of um, this thing 
I'm going to give you names of, I think that I don't think it would be appropriate for me to start calling out names. Uh, okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, but I will just say that if you're going into any agricultural investment, make sure that you're protected. Make sure that um, any agri investment you're doing has insurance. So there are many agri investments. Okay, so I can give you, at least I can give you a name, like Apex, because they are like a, a an exchange commodity house. So I, I think I can give that name. So, and then they always make sure that their um, investments are insured, right? They, are, they, they, ins they insure at least a minimum of 50%. So, so, yeah, so if you want to go into any agri investment, you insurance, you make sure, making sure that you insurance, because it's very, it's, agri agriculture is a very, very risky venture. Everything depends on whether the farmer is able to sell. If the farmer is not able to sell, if rain doesn't fall, if um, you know, there's a lot of risk. So that's why there is usually a lot of return in that aspect too, because of the risk. Thank you very right, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Florence. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we, everything that we said today, I understand that. We should understand the investments we are going into. To research the company and the investment options before we go into now to help us with investment decisions. We should know our investment profile, define our investment objectives, and know risk tolerance, and know your lifestyle, what you put according to your size. Thank you very much. Florence thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. From everybody here, I want to just say thank you for enlightening us on building our investment portfolio. And thank you, basically. Yeah. So thank you. So for everyone that joined, for everyone that joined this light box section, thank you very much for joining. We hope to see you in our next light post session because it's going to be enlightening as this one. So, in case of nothing else, have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.